what happened with Kyle Juszczyk last week is also indicative of the same problem under the 49ers. These guys who have gotten too much money, who have been here for too long, who don't feel like they need to answer to authority. They don't think that, they don't feel like they need to be professional. They don't understand that if you're not living up to a standard on the field, you definitely shouldn't be talking uh, crap to the media. And I think that you kind of pointed this out in your article when asking what was going on with the 49ers and what's wrong with the 49ers. And I know maybe for some people it's hard to see the connection, but for me, it's very clear. The personal element is indicative of the team's mindset. Um, I thought what Kyle Yushek did last week in like insinuating a pretty homophobic comment about a beat writer and then going on to have a game where he had zero targets, zero catches, zero anything, when his best game is like two catches for 40 yards. Um, I'm not saying Kyle Yushek is a bad player, but I think it's, I mean, I, I don't understand how the team has gotten to a place where veterans feel comfortable saying, like I said, completely Taking unprofessional like that. Yeah. homophobic comments to the media. Like, they clearly don't feel like they have to answer to John Lynch or to Kyle Shanahan. And I don't know if it's the buddy-buddy thing that Kyle has done that makes these players feel like they're untouchable, but there's no, like, balance of power. Um, it almost reminds me, like, with parenting, I, um, I did a lot of early childhood development and I never want to be, and, and it's shown to, to be uh, not helpful to be like an authority, authoritative parent that is always like punishing and yelling and uh, uh, hitting whatever you're ch spanking your child. That doesn't create, you know, great um, confidence and skills within your child that creates maybe a child that's trying to avoid getting hurt but not a child that like intrinsically is motivated to like do certain things but also on the same end you kind of had like a backlash which was like never you know give the child any orders just be their best friend just hold their hand you know and that also creates a very undisciplined child and a child that doesn't feel safe because children actually need structure and their brains crave structure and discipline not in a right. scary way but like right. formats and and routine in order for them their bodies to feel safe to grow and thrive and learn and their brains to learn and not be focused on survival they want to know that there's a caretaker that's going to be responsible for them while they're exploring and figuring out how to crawl and whatever shit similarly Kyle Shanahan being everyone's buddy buddy making sure his friends get paid who turn out to have maybe season end ending injuries, getting Kyle Juszczyk paid, even though Tom Brady is on the freaking broadcast being like, why are they not playing 11 personnel? They don't have the best players on the field. Why, you know, this guy has made $38 million and hasn't even gotten 2000 yards in his career. I'm not saying Kyle Juszczyk is totally unimportant, but Kyle's attitude has allowed him to feel comfortable to make unprofessional homophobic comments. Exactly. And I think that is indicative of bad team culture. And sh like, it's not surprising to me that this team is out for themselves, not together and not focused on the right things. Instead of focusing yeah. on winning two games before the two, two days before a game, you're focused on a beat reporter. Ridiculous. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It, it all ties together. It's Kyle, you know, Part of the characteristic traits of a narcissist is and an ENTJ type, if you know Myers Briggs, that's from my MBA stuff. Kyle's ENTJ, that's the commander mindset. They have problems with boundaries. And so Kyle has trouble with boundaries in that he's their friend, he's their coach, he's their GM, he's their offensive coordinator. If you don't set the boundaries, then you get something like this where Juszczyk can see the example set by Shanahan and say, okay, he takes shots at beat writers. I can take shots at beat writers. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not going to get in any trouble for it because Shanahan is my friend. And, and so Juszczyk can say those things knowing he'll be protected within the 49ers sphere. And that goes back okay. to culture. That's Bill a good point. Walsh, Bill Walsh specifically would say, 
I would never socialize with my players because I wanted distance, because I needed to be their coach. Shanahan, you know, it's I've got a list a mile long of things Bill Walsh did that succeeded. But Kyle has done the opposite and failed. And, and this is one of them, is the blurring of the lines. The Cabo click should not exist. No. Kyle shouldn't be hanging with these guys in Mexico or anywhere else on a vacation. You shouldn't do that. And it leads to things like what you checked it. And, you know, I separate the player. You know, the players, the players, the players know the are pro bowler. The, the player has a proven career. He's been a great player. But I will separate that out from the person that made this judgment, that went after Grant and made you know, just inexcusable comments that are way over the line that should never have been said, ever. Yeah. But he Absolutely. felt confident and safe doing so because of his relationship with Shanahan. That never would have happened with Walsh, ever. And, and that needs say- to be remembered with all of this. So it's, that's part of the problem. Then beyond that, it, it's Kyle not applying ownership to himself. He never takes blame for anything. He's taken blame once. And that, was for, that was for Trey Lance after he was dealt. That's the only yeah. time Kyle Shanahan has taken personal blame. His team then follows that lead. They don't take accountability either. We're the best team over the last five years. You haven't won a ring. Um, Diamond or Lenore yesterday, you know, just they lucked out. And it's, you can't do these the rationalizations. Diamond or Lenore said that. He also said that after the Rams game. He was like, oh, if we would have played them again, we would win. It's like, dude, don't. And I, it's don't hard, rationalize. Yeah, Face up to the fact that you lost and you got outplayed, you got outcoached. Exactly. And I, it's so interesting, like, how things mirror each other, where Kyle Shanahan kisses up to Jed York. Jed York wants to be liked, so he ends up giving Kyle Shanahan way too much power, whatever he wants, just to make Kyle happy because he likes that Kyle makes him look good. And then... That's also shown in the players where the players know if you buddy buddy up to Kyle, if you're, you know, in the Cabo click, you start part, you know, partying with Kyle on the off season, that he's going to look out for you. And when you have two Achilles that are both strained, he's going to get you paid anyways, because you're his friend. Um, He know, I also love just now you said when Kyle is questioned about a play that went wrong, about a bat, a poor game plan, not being able to adjust, losing a giant lead in the fourth quarter, which he's not, sh- you know, uh, which is very common for him, unfortunately. Kyle Shanahan responds with vitriol to the media. He either A, is purposely snarky, especially if he's, you know, not on a multiple losing streak. He'll, he feels way more confident to do that. But even in a losing streak just today, He's very short, uh, cold, feels like he's above the question. He'll kind of mock the the beat reporter. We saw this with um, Matt Mayoko a couple of games ago where he mocked Matt Mayoko. Yeah. There was a clarifying question later on. Uh, Kyle Shanahan doubled down. And, yeah, when those things are happening with your coach and the owner is allowing it, it makes sense that those things are then going to feel acceptable by the players and then the coach is going to allow it, just like the the owner allows his coach to act like that. So it's just this, it, they kind of mirror each other. Jed lets Kyle get away with stuff because Kyle makes him feel good. Kyle lets the Cabo click, the stars, get away with stuff because they make him feel good. And it's a bad, it's a, maybe makes them feel good, but it's a bad way to win a Super Bowl and construct your football team. I'll tell you that. Um There's a need for accountability. They have to hold themselves accountable. If you don't have accountability, you don't have urgency. And you you tend to gravitate to rationalizations, like what Lenore said or like what Debo said. And you have to commit to, and this is another contrast with the Walsh era, you have to commit to saying that this is our responsibility, our standard, we have to protect it. Yeah. Um, and then people are also rightfully Mr. Corey and Papa J Niner gang also said something similar that an additional reason Kyle was going to give even more favoritism to Chris McCaffrey is there's also a family connection there. Um, 
all that stuff in most teams is probably fine because I feel like coaches know how to balance a level of professionalism, even if they are more buddy buddy. If you want to look at Sean McVay, who I think is relatively friendly with his players, um, I'm sure there's a more relevant example, but the one that pops in my mind right now as I'm talking is Odell Beckham uh, towards his kid. Like they signed him after he had the uh, the ACL injury. Then he tears his ACL in the Super Bowl. Everyone's like, oh, you got to re-sign him. Like, that's bad luck, yada, yada, yada. The Rams cut Odell Beckham. They did not re-sign him after that. And Odell yeah. still invited Sean McVay to his wedding. So clearly, Sean McVay is somehow able to keep, like, a um, a level of, like, person personal bond with someone outside of football while still being able to say, this is nothing personal to you, but my main goal is this football team and what's best for us as a team. And, I, right. and I'm not going to let our personal rel- relationship affect that. And shockingly, I'm sure some people wouldn't respond well to it, but Odell, Odell after being cut, still valued McVay enough. And to me, that's such a, a, a statement on the way that McVeigh is able to to be, I guess, friendly. I don't know if friend, friendly is the, re- the right word, but be personal with his players while keeping a level of authority over oh, them. He's not maintaining a distance. You still have a you're connection. You're not going to influence the- me, and you're not going to put our posi- our team in a bad position. And at the end of the day, I'm going to do what's best for me, for my career, for our football team, even if that's not best for you. But I still care about you as a person and I wish you well. And there's there's this mutual understanding that this is a business and I am your boss. Kyle Shanahan purposely tries to not be people's boss. He's like, don't call me Shanahan, call me Kyle. It's like, well, there's there should be some regiment to this and there's not. And maybe when they were younger, the, the players thought that was cool, but multiple lost Super Bowls and they seem to be looking and wishing that there was a leader. And yeah. Kyle isn't one. Well, and, and someone that maintains a distance, that understands the roles. And again, it's Kyle's personality type is one that blurs borders. That's why he does this. It, it, it's part of just who he is. Um, that's his way of going about things. With McVeigh, he knew that set the roles, that I'm going to support you. I am definitely going to be for, there for you as a person, but I'm also your head coach. I've got a team to run, and that's a separate entity. And he did that well. And one of the things to remember with Sean McVay, he's the son of John McVay, who was absolutely critical and vital to the Niners. He was the co-GM along with Walsh. And yeah. so part of what Sean McVay learned was from his father, that you need to have that separation and that oh, you right, need right. to have balance. You need to have accountability. Now, all the things that were part of what made the Niners a champion are things that John McVay knew and embodied and passed along to his son. I, th- I really feel like we we landed on something here and on this being a foundation of not only the team's problems and what got them here, but also why now these older veterans seemingly are questioning or side-eyeing Kyle. And it really just makes, like I said, it, it calls into my psychology background and just knowing that when you're a little kid you're like yeah the cool parent is letting me stay up and eat popsicles and not do my homework but as you start getting older you actually realize I don't feel safe with this person and I don't trust that they have my best interests and I don't trust that they have a plan like they're just kind of like winging it to be my friend but they don't actually, they're not like thinking ahead about my long-term what's best for me. And when you get older, you kind of look at the parent that maybe had a little bit more discipline or made you have a bedtime or made you finish your homework and get up early and go to school. And it's like, that's actual, like in a, in a family situ- situation, you go, that's, that's actual love. It's not like being the best, you know, the, the best friend that you can have in the moment What's actual love and care. And makes you feel safe is having that structured routine and having an authority figure in your life. And I think and in sports, in sports, it's similar. Like yeah. you need to have 
like, yeah, maybe you don't want, obviously Belichick pushed it too far, especially with this new generation. You don't want to have someone who's such an asshole that you don't feel comfortable talking to them or going up to them. But at the same time, if they just let you get away with everything and then things aren't working, like maybe if they would have won a Super Bowl, this would be different, but they, it hasn't been working. And now it feels like these veterans are kind of going, where is the leadership? Where's the person with a plan? What is our identity? It used to be we're tough, we're the bullies, defense first, run game. Now a couple analysts have criticized your drop back passing game. So we're just airing it out, I guess, to prove ESPN wrong. Instead yeah, of I don't know about any like, of that. I'm not goal? sure if that's what's going on. But to your point, there's a lack of structure and with that a lack of focus that all of this just seems kind of generic. It, it's reaction to the moment. There doesn't seem to be a plan any longer. There doesn't seem to be an identity on offense or defense. However, part of defining who you are and part of creating an identity is having players in their prime. If you double down and over-invest in your veterans, then you're going to be counting upon them to carry the team and help define its identity at a time when they're no longer in their prime and they're not playing to that level anymore. And that hurts your team overall. And that's part of what Shanahan, the GM, has done. I hope and pray that the Niners will learn from this and say that we can never have all of these roles in one person again. They have to split apart. GM has to be on his own with full control of the team. Head coach is the head coach and maybe the offensive coordinator. That's it. That's what works. That's what they need. 